I am a metahuman, the next generation of digital human powered by Unreal Engine. I am fully rigged, ready for animation and motion capture, allowing you to work in context. With everything running live in Unreal Engine, my motion works seamlessly. Hello guys, Mars Freeman's here. Today in this quick tutorial, I want to show you how you can use the Blender new hair curve system to create amazing furs or even haircuts for your characters. In the same way as a particle system, you can use your groom assets in your cinematics and in your game project. So this workflow comparing to particle system not only works better, but you have more control how at the end your groom asset gonna look. And the best thing is you will transfer your mesh's UV data to your groom assets so you can use your character textures to color your groom asset. It comes really handy because I use Substance Painter to paint my cat and I can use the same texture to color my grooming asset so everything just really nicely goes together. You're not limited just to that, you can also create a color mask and color your groom inside the Unreal Engine. So let's jump into it. So first we need to download the plugin for the Blender. It's called Unreal Engine Groom Exporter. Uh, it's free but if you can donate something so the developer keeps updating this plugin for the future use. So after I have purchased the add-on, currently at this video I'm going to be using Groom Exporter Library included version 15 for Blender 4.1. So the new system is I believe only in the Blender 4.0 and above so I'm going to use 4.1 in this. Uh, so if you want to follow along use 4.1. So once we are in the Blender first thing we need to go to edit preferences we're going to go to add-ons install find your grooming plugin and click install add-on after it installs make sure to enable it now just import any mesh that you want to apply the grooming so in my case i will finish my cat character and last thing that for me is a tail i'm not going to go too much in the detail about creating your fur is itself uh because this is more like a workflow oriented but I'm using the same basically settings and the same nodes across uh, my whole cat character. Click your tail. We're going to go to add curve and I'm going to do empty hair. You can use the fur, but I like empty hair because I like to stock my own things and paint myself. So I'm going to do the empty hair. So before we're moving forward, um, we're going to need to go here to the attributes and add some stuff. And it's going to be every time for every fur, you're going to need to add it. So even if you add, let's say next layer, you know, you go again, add uh, curve, empty here for every single one, you're going to need to add these parameters for everything to work. So first thing we're going to do, so we select the curve. We're going to click this plus icon. We're going to add radius. We're going to add color. And then we're going to add a custom and we're going to call this roughness. And we can see it's using the UV map from the tail and all that stuff. Then uh, what we're going to do this, we're going to click this groom thing. That's from the new add-on. And here in the first section, this is put this information here. So for the groom root UV, you need to put surface UV coordinate. Make sure that the right the spelling and everything is lowercase and stuff like that. Then for groom color, you need to put color. For groom roughness, put roughness. And for groom width, put radius. And this is going to be important when we can export things. But I usually like to set this from the beginning so I don't forget it. And now we can go to start applying our groom. So first thing I'm going to select again the curve. I'm going to go to the sculpt mode. I'm going to play with the density brush and here you can set um, density you want. I can set a 0 0.1 because this is density I'm using across my character. Then you can set here the length shape. You can set the length, how many points you want and all that stuff. So I'm just going to click this because I want it to kind of like use the previous data. So I'm going to kind of paint it here a bit. And this is what I suggest you to do. So paint a bit here. And then I get a combat and I would suggest you kind of like, don't go too close, but close. Make it so it's fluffy so you can brush it down, but don't get too close to um, the mesh itself because if there is no distance, it's going to become flat and it's, you're not going to see it in the camera. It's basically going to look the same way as you would just texture paint it. So keep some distance between the mesh and the fur itself. 
And you can always also go back here and there's a, something called puff. You can puff it up if you need to. So one thing you actually need to enable is this one. So here's the small button. We need to enable this. And this will prevent your groom to go inside the mesh. And I actually also can enable symmetry. And now I can go back to the density. And as I set this interpolate, it's gonna keep going the same way as this. So if I'm starting to paint, we can see it keeps the same way as I painted, um, the same direction and all that. Once your tail is done, for tail it's very easy. For bigger asset places, like for example for face, I would suggest you to layer it. Because it's going to make you also going to give you ability to kind of like play around with different settings. As we can see, for example, for my face, I have one part, second part, third part, then ears is separate, and then also whiskers are separate. What we're going to do now is if we go here in this corner right here, you need to see like a crosshair and pu pull it here. So you have two windows. And then we're going to go, we're going to click here. We're going to go to Asset Browser. And that's going to open up this hair panel. And this is where we're going to start to get the ge geometry nodes uh, to kind of adjust this one a bit. So I'm going to go here. So the first thing I usually add is set curve profile. So we can just drag it up on this one. And I like to set radius to 0 0.001. Here it actually doesn't matter um, what you set because I like to actually control my radiuses in Unreal Engine so I can see in real time actually how it affects. I usually put this one just to make sure that in a blender, our, all hair has the same width and then I can later on tweak. I can show you how you can tweak it in Unreal Engine. So after that, we can add a hair curve noise. So we can start to increase the distance and so you can see it start to get fluffier. So I gonna, I, for this one, I usually set for like 15. So you know our tail has got a fluffier. Then we can increase the shape and see if we can get some kind of different shapes. So I'm just going to leave this at one and then we can increase the scale of the fact. So I can increase the scale to something like five. So this looks good. So if we compare, we can see we have got some noise. So our tail doesn't look uniform and looks a bit more natural. And actually the other node that I usually add is this freeze hair curve. We can add this and we can increase the distance and we can see we are getting different flaffiness. And I got to put like something like 0 0.2 look good. And just to make it the shape, I'm maybe going to bring this down a bit. Again, like if you increase the shape to one, it gets very like the effect is very strong. Uh, I'm going to put it to like 0 0.02 maybe. I don't want too much. So this gave a bit of the noise and then I'm stocking with this one. And now it looks almost like a cat fur. And I'm using actually almost the same parameters. The same nodes all across my whole cat. We can see if I click any of these. So I use the same thing. I was just layering, playing with parameters, ad adjusting the values. Uh, so you can get different looks in a in cat so it doesn't look so uniform. But here I just matched actually the values with the body so the tail looks exactly the same thing like a body. So once you are done, uh, you can select your curve. If you have multiple curves, like let's say for example like I have in my body, you can just shift select all of them. Uh, in my case, I'm just going to select this one. I'm just going to call it. So now open up again this grooming thing and click this button. Mm button set attributes and what it's going to do is it's going to fill up this field and why it's important is because every time you change something here let's say i'm changing something right we can see this gets empty so that's why it's important to set up here is because every time you click set attributes it's going to fill up again so if i again set one it empties out, so if you manually fill this every time you change a parameter, this gets empty. And it's annoying, especially if you, for example, have multiple ones. You're not going to go one by one, fill this data, so that's why this field is here. 
we can just uh, click set attributes and it's gonna automatically fill up the field. So then we can click button export. So give it a name, I'm gonna call my tail fair. Here you need to play with, around with your groom scale because it depends how your character is scaled. Since my character is scaled at uh, one, which is kind of like 1000, um, then I need to set this to one. If my character would be scaled to sometimes in Blender, when you put the character in, it's like 0 0.01, then you would need to set the groom scale to 100, I believe. So that's why it's usually kind of like Make sure you can always experiment. If you import your groom, groom into the Unreal Engine, for example, you put in your character, you don't see it, then play with the scale. But in my case, I know that the groom scale is one, so I'm just gonna export it. So once I export it, I can go to my Unreal Engine project. So I'm gonna find my cat. So before you're importing it, uh, make sure that you have a fur plugin enabled. So we're gonna go to Edit Plugins. And we're gonna search for a lambic, a lambic groom importer. Make sure to enable this. If it's not enabled, then enable it and restart your engine. After you have enabled the plugin, now you can drag and drop your four into the scene. We're gonna drag this one. Um, leave everything at default. It needs to be this all zero zero one one. If you can see here, root UV color roughness, uh, that's a good sign. So it means that everything is set up correctly. We can click import. So I can open up my blueprint for my cat. So we can see I have my tail here that doesn't have fur. So I can add to my tail, I can search for groom, groom and I can write tail. Then I gonna grab my grooming asset. I'm going to sign it and we can see we don't see anything because it's down here because we need to have a binding asset. Make a right click on your fur, go to create a binding, search for your skeletal mesh you want to attach it to. So in my case, I'm going to attach it to the tail. I'm going to create it and then I'm going to go to blueprint. We're going to assign the binding asset. So you can see nicely assigned and we can test it out. And we can see that we barely can see our four because again, we now we need to adjust the width. So if you open up the four asset, we go under the strands. So here is going to be your tail four. And if you have multiple uh, grooming assets under one, then you can see all of them here. So what I'm going to do is I can add hair width and I can leave it at 0.01. I believe that's what I use default. And I'm just going to bring down the tip scale to something like 0 0.5. And again, here is water where you can change the width in case, for example, you want more. For example, like something you like, like this, oh, maybe even 0 0.5, but I'm going to keep it at 0 0.01, maybe 0, 0 0.2. Yeah. And now the last thing is we want to color it. We're going to do create a new material. Could we call this M4? So what we need to do is we're going to change this from default to hair. And now we need to get hair attributes. And this is what's going to let us use the UVs from our texture. And we also need to actually search here for hair use with hair strands. Make sure to click this one. And now I'm going to show you something. So if we grab the texture from our tail, I'm going to grab my texture and I'm just going to put it here. So I'm going to show you first how it looks if you would just add it just like that. We go to the character and we can see that we get a color. It's all gray. We don't have these lines and stuff like that. So that's why we need to use this root UV, which is going to get the UVs from our tail and going to apply it to our tail fur. And now we can see that our tail is colored exactly how our body fur. And now we have a character that has a tail with the fur colored exactly how you want. And the cool thing is you can even expand this by adding, let's say, a color mask that colors, let's say, specific areas, like in my case, it's like the stripe. So in my case, 
I have these stripes. So we can use that to lure it through to have two different colors. And what this gives is we can color our character for whatever we want. We can set this, let's say pink, and let's set this to something bluish. And you can make a lot of cool variations for your cat because now the fur is using the UVs off the underlying mesh, which is pretty, pretty cool. So anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, like and subscribe, check my Patreon and my YouTube membership to see the ways how you can support the channel and see you in the next one. Bye.